welcome again, um, Reverend Bill Wiley Kellerman. Um, and this is our, our final conversation before our final session with the book club, um, engaging with Dr. Wink's work, The Powers That Be. Um, and, you know, I, I, you know, I really am deeply thankful for your expertise and insights, um, Bill, uh, in our last conversation, but also in in engaging with this book club and and the ideas of of Dr. Wink, um, uh, and 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 really thinking about how we wrestle with um, nonviolence in during these times, right? In in times where we are um, actually seeing. Um, Amplified violence, uh, the ins- the 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 hate crime in Buffalo that happened, the ongoing and and continuing escalation of the Ukrainian war, um, as well as all of the sort of you know various microaggressions, the indirect and direct violences that people are experiencing in everyday life. Um, and I, I actually wanted to, you know, ask about your insights of how we can practice in our everyday life, practice really nonviolence, mm-hmm. especially when we're wrestling with our reactive nature, like wanting to um, make things right because we're witnessing such sheer violence in our everyday life and how you've you know, sort of your strategies, your tactics, your approaches, um, how you've centered into this practice of nonviolence and and how we can support each other and our community at large with engaging in this this practice of nonviolence. Well, maybe I'd start with the notion of practice. which has multiple meanings, but uh, uh, one of which is practice, practice, practice. Uh, yeah. And uh, and I think the, the kind of the spiritual disciplines that uh, go with practicing nonviolence is a part of disciplining basically our hearts uh, yeah. as well as our certainly our minds as, as well, but uh, in such a way that uh, we're formed in nonviolence. Uh, our, our personalities, our character, uh, such that uh, in, a, in a moment of uh, where some kind of action is suddenly called for in, in a situation of violence, say, uh, our instincts are are trained. You know, we we act uh, instinctively uh, out of the out of a commitment to, to nonviolence, um, and that means <laughs> resisting the the spirit of violence that's that's all around us. Right, that uh, all the things that uh, that you just named. Um, I was in a conversation uh, a few weeks ago uh, uh, with a, a, a resistor in in the Ukraine, a pacifist, uh, Yuri Shalzenko, who, uh, yeah, in the midst of the bullets flying and the and the tanks rolling. Uh, is, is he someone you know? Do you know him? I know his name, and I think you've mentioned him to me before as well. So, and Did we talk about him in our last session? No, we didn't. I think this was another conversation that okay. you and I yeah. had. had. Yeah, well, the, 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 the conversation that uh, we were having he, uh, with a group of people, uh, he, he was talking about uh, a recent uh, uh, caravan that came from, I think started in Italy, and it was a caravan of 70 vans uh, driving uh, across the border and uh, to Kiev. Uh, 
and sort of paralleling the tank uh, caravan that, that was at that time uh, stalled. And the, the caravan was carrying uh, food and medicine uh, uh, to the city uh, and then returning with uh, refugees, carrying refugees. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, uh, really, I, I thought, a creative uh, nonviolent uh, action in the midst of the war. And, uh, you know, he said the, the task was to, uh, to speak the truth and even in the midst of the war to be building a culture of, of nonviolence and, and, and uh, living it and, and participating in it, acting out of it, practicing it, as you said. And it's 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 really this building of a culture in a way, right? It's 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 really engaging, connecting with other people who are working together toward that, like this building our capacity to do that. And that there may be times that it's not a perfect, it's not always perfect. Like our right. practice, we could keep on practicing, but it's, you know, there are times where we may may act out in violence, um, but we can hold each other accountable in that space, right? That we can, we can go, oh, wait a second, with, 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 and, and engage in our imaginations, right? Our creative spirits to, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. in a way, check, check each other and check ourselves, right? To go, could there have been a different way to, a, a nonviolent way to approach what I had when when I acted violently, right? Um, and I think that's one of the things that we don't talk about as much as this. And maybe in my circles we don't talk about it as much as this, 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 this. You know, in this space that, like, we are. It, it takes work. It takes practice. It takes our our, our building of this culture together. Um, and 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 holding each other with grace right. when when there is that fallenness when there is this this space of oh I actually responded violently or I acted violently or whether it was direct or indirect um, that that I need to now find ways to work together to repair that or or find you know to to inspire my imagination to creatively understand what I could have done differently so that going mm -hmm. forward as part of building this culture. Right. Um, and, and I think, I, yeah, go I ahead. I think it's what we do in, in, uh, in nonviolence training, you know, whether it's yeah. a training for uh, violence de-escalation and, uh, uh, or viol uh, training for, for nonviolent direct action. Um, mm -hmm. And so often those, uh, those preparations involve role plays uh, where, where we're putting our bodies in, in situations uh, where we imagine uh, uh, violence or even experience it in the, in the role play uh, and, uh, and collectively, I mean, there's a, everyone's acting individually, but you're acting together in the, in the role play, uh, and that's that's part of building that culture within ourselves, right? Right, and 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 I I love the that practice again, like coming back to practice and coming back to in a role play or in 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 community gathering, um, in those kinds of trainings where we're focused in on um, sort of in those spaces we can actually experiment, test, engage with those, mm -hmm. those times or those, those places where, where we may, may be confronted with violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one of, one of, and I, and I, you know, I deeply appreciate those trainings and those, those ways to build our capacity within our community. And sometimes I get, when I, you know, coming from those trainings or being going back into other communities I'm part of, right? I can that 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 can wax and wane. Like that's one of the things that I get challenged with and I wrestle with consistently is that and and it and 
And when I engage in communities that are not necessarily doing that same practice, right? That same practice of, of building a culture of nonviolence, mm -hmm. right? Because I feel sometimes I come into, there are parts of my community that are really trying to engage in that that culture of nonviolence. And then there's other parts of the community I, because I belong to multiple communities, right? Um, and that when I am in other communities, I get drawn out of that space. Um, and what I've appreciated what you say is how do you practice being present with that nonviolence okay. consistently, mm -hmm. even when you're not in communities that are trying to build a culture of nonviolence, mm -hmm. right? And that's been one of my challenges and what I continue to wrestle with is what, what happens, and, and it takes a lot of this deep mindfulness, a lot of the ongoing work. Um, and I honestly have to say, it takes a lot of prayer for me, right? I have yeah. to be in this ongoing, yeah. Almost mantra like prayers that I just that roll off my tongue to sort of remind consistently keep me present in that culture of nonviolence. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm in other parts of the communities that I belong to, where there is actually a culture of violence, right? Mm -hmm. Not a culture yeah. of nonviolence, but an existing culture of violence where. Yeah where when someone witnessed something being done against our community, there's this reactive force, right? That's quite aggressive. And I, can't, I mean, I admittedly come from communities where there is this sort of like, hey, if you've done something wrong to my community, I'm gonna go after you, right? <laughs> um, and for me to practice, how do I consistently try to practice? Mm when I'm encountering even the people I care about engaging in cultures of violence, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think about, uh, in, this, in this regard, I think about the, the freedom struggle in particular mm -hmm. and, and the way in which, you, you know, when you're talking about spaces uh, where the sanctuary mm -hmm. was literally the space that you went out from um, and, uh, Often, you know, let's say in uh, Birmingham, uh, the action would begin in the church mm. with prayer, <laughs> yes. with uh, singing, uh, exuberant uh, singing and uh, knockdown preaching, and and people were together in the spirit, and they went out in, then into the streets, right, and. Uh, and in a way, the violence uh, of the powers, the powers had already been cut off at the knees in the, in the sanctuary. Yeah. You know, when people went out, they, yeah. the, the battle had happened, you know, yeah. uh, like Walter says, you know, it was, yeah. it was uh, they were met and, uh, uh, and people were acting in a common spirit that had been shared and generated uh, in basically in prayer and worship, you know, and, and in that, that's an instance where that practice happens immediately, you know, it's like yeah. practice and straight to the, to the street. Um, but sometimes it's farther separated than that. And that's where I think we, you know, work towards trying to make sure there's more into like that more connections and not this, these chasms that, yeah. Yeah. um, exist and that's that's also another struggle that i i face quite a bit and part of my prayers and intent sacred intentions is how do i not have this tendency to distance right mm. to to run away or walk away um uh so that my engagement and my practice of engagement right is is keeping people close rather than far, consistently mm. seeking to humanize, mm. even though there's a tendency to dehumanize and distance so that right. it's a lot easier to perpetuate or to commit acts of violence. Um, uh, and that's hard. That's been really hard. That's that's a constant 
I keep on telling folks in my life, this is a constant piece of work for all of us, right? Um, uh, And part of what you had mentioned earlier in our conversation is part of our, not only practice, but spiritual practices, right? I mean, there's, there's, there's something to be said about the spiritual practices, the spiritual exercises that we engage in, Mm -hmm. because we need that level of endurance, I sense. I don't know how you feel about it, but that, 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 that it's 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 honing our muscles and building that that part of us that's so integral to this work sure. um, that animates the spirit and that l- allows the spirit to work through us mm-hmm. so that in a space of reactivity the spirit we've allowed the spirit to also inhabit and dwell with us so that our reactivity is not with violence but with love right our our reactivity is with us with a with an orientation toward right um for me at least the redemption of the powers right this this work of redeeming the powers um hmm. um including ourselves it feels like uh, you know right right i was thinking yeah. that um uh, well, you make me think back to uh, a story that Walter told earlier in the in the book, uh, yeah. and I'm trying to remember the setting exactly. Uh, uh, it, I think it was James Bevel, Bevel leading uh, leading music and saying, you know, do you love Martin King? Do you love? Yeah. Uh, and then coming around, do you love Jim Clark, the, yes. the sheriff they were up against? Yes. Um, and I think about uh, intercession. Well, that's an intercessory uh, effort, spiritual effort there that's being uh, called forth. Um, it was Bonhoeffer who, who said that intercession was uh, feeling the need or even the sin of another person so deeply, feeling the need of another person so deeply that you pray their prayer huh. uh, in 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 their stead uh, wow. on their behalf right um, and uh, uh, you know of course nonviolence um, and Walter pushes this uh, is you know how do we how do we do that with the enemy you know mm. how do we uh, how do we pray their prayer? Mm-hmm. in their stead and that's a that's that's a, a sometimes for i mean at least there are times in my life where i it's hard to pray that prayer <laughs> they, especially if yeah. if i continue to feel the deepness of that wound mm-hmm. right of of you know it's i was talking to one of one of my close colleagues who's with the Black um, Women's Cooperative in Boston, which I've talked about quite a bit. And, and she asked me, she's like, Fernando, I, I continue to try to hold compassion, but it's it, it's getting harder and harder. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, you know, especially when, you know, not only my life is on the line, but a lot of like the hurt, that pain, there's like so much of that, that searing pain that exists in her body. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that materially and spiritually, it's so deep that, 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 that pain, um, is so there, so present. Um, and that's where that, you know, when I talk with her and when I experience my own wound, right. You know, how, you know, how, how, it, it gets harder. It, it's hard for me sometimes to pray the enemy's prayer, right. you know, or their prayer, not even the enemy's another human being's prayer. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, how do I keep them humanized? Right. In the space of they are, all, they like me are human. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I feel that pain of, of, as, as my, you know, as she often says, the sword that pierces your soul, um, and it continues to pierce your soul. Um, 
And yet I witness her in her space is holding compassion, right? right. Like, if there, I mean, and that's, I was like, I told her the other day, I was like, as much as I saw you, we were in a meeting and I, I literally witnessed her getting eliminated in that meeting, right? Like <laughs> in a lot of ways, getting eliminated in that meeting. Yeah. And every attempt that we, a number of us in a meeting, in that meeting had made to try to keep her humanized and keep her present with us in that space. Uh, it was fascinating for me to be, I was getting increasingly upset, increasingly angry. Um, and she stopped, she literally stopped the meeting. She literally just stopped all of us talking and said, I just want to remember and remind each of us that all of us here are human beings. And it literally just sort of shifted yeah, yeah. how we interacted with each other. She just stopped it because it, she she could tell already that she was getting, she was going, she was almost, mm -hmm. she was getting, you know, she's become so invisible in that space. Um, and she was the, actually the person she had to keep on raising her hand and keep on exerting, you know, her presence um, until finally she just literally said, can we just stop? And yeah. which for me was actually, a, you know, I, I told her afterwards, I said that was that was really pivotal for us to remind ourselves um, of, of our own fallenness in that space, mm -hmm. right? And and, mm -hmm. and and to reorient ourselves um, into a space of nonviolence. Yeah. That to me was, but it was so hard to get, it was just really, it came at a cost, because afterwards I have to, I admittedly have to say, I was exhausted after that, Bill. I literally like was so, and I was with her was just like, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. This is just right. really difficult to witness you consistently getting pummeled in these spaces. She's like, Fernando, but we're together like that. Like if you, if, if I could not have been there, right. I would have been, el an, an, you know, eliminated, right. right. Because there is, as you, you know, I, I, your words are all, and I, you, I've been reading a number of your books and you keep on reminding me of this consistently, like this community, this, uh, this culture of nonviolence is so essential, right? I mean, it's this, 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 this belongingness with nonviolence is critical in that space because what, what, coffee had mentioned to me she's like i needed you there for me to remember that i belong to this community right. that it'll always rehumanize someone not dehumanize them that yeah. my reaction to my my own elimination is not to counter it with violence right but to remind people of my own humanness <clears throat> you're talking about an academic context here i'm thinking right yeah, it was yeah. a very academic and, context. Which, which is a huge principality. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and where, where white supremacy is thoroughly embedded, you know. And, alive and well. Uh, yeah, alive and well. really. And, uh, and to, I don't know, to, I think as you say, to say stop, uh, for human beings is to is to try to create some uh, space and freedom in the midst of that kind of spirit operating uh, full tilt. You know, uh, yeah, I have a friend here in in uh, in Detroit, uh, Filipina uh, professor who you know has a long saga, uh, and I was just hearing it again the, the other night. But it's very much the same of being eliminated and dis dissed and yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. even by student avowals, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, but it reminded me, I, I forgot which book you had written this in, but it reminded me of, it's almost like taking a breath, mm. right? It's, yeah. it's, it, it allows for us to breathe in that space. Yeah. 
and pause it and reimagine a different way of engagement with each other. Mm -hmm. In this very heady space that I was in, right? right. I couldn't even imagine. I was like so caught up in that principality, that fallen, that fallenness that I couldn't find my way out of it. Mm -hmm. Instead, I was only getting increasingly angry and increasingly upset and starting to be at the edges of my own violence, right? Um, Yeah. And it was it it really was coffee who said no like this let's the can I just this this has gotten so we've gotten so violent in this space mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Um, yeah <clears throat> well I'm thinking of uh, you know Walter's last chapter here and I mean we're basically talking about prayer and. Yeah. And and the powers and uh, uh, he comes round to you know here at the end of really uh, throwing down for prayer as a fundamental engagement of the, yeah. of the powers, uh, but also I mean, sort of parallel to that, um, uh, I think of pastoral work. You know, which I've done in a congregation, not not so different from a, a, you know an academic context in certain ways, uh, institutionally. Uh, uh, but in pastoral work, you know, you're you're considering the uh, as a pastor the relationship between God and a community, uh, and so often we assume that's the that's the whole picture, but in fact, the powers are intervening there yeah. as well. Whether you're talking about uh, white supremacy or, uh, you know, economic uh, forces that divide people, uh, but, but that's a an active present in in pastoral care work as well. And and Walter paints the picture of a prayer. Uh, uh, our, our demand for God to, to change uh, and what seems like God's incapacity or uh, delay or saying no uh, is actually the work of the powers in, yeah. in preventing. Um, there was a, 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 there was a, a line, much of this, uh, that last chapter, uh, Though it's condensed, is most of it's in a chapter in in engaging the powers. Yeah. One line that's left out of out of this synopsis that I think is one of the most brilliant in the in the book is he says that a that a miracle is only what we call is what we call what the powers have deluded us to think that God is unable to do. Right. Uh, or have convinced us is impossible. Right. Right. Um, and uh, and the prayer is opening the, the space for the possible. Right. right. Yeah. And and the realization that the miracle is there already. Right. That the miracle is in that space. Right. That the miracle is not impossible, but actually real. Right. It's it actually can manifest and actualize. Right. And and I appreciate that you brought brought that 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 passage that's actually missing in the powers that be but uh, as you said is is really spelled out in in the third book of the trilogy um because in a way it is this it is our our in our our practice of prayer and our engagement for our consistent work with prayer mm-hmm. that allows for the, the manifestation of the realness of a, a miracle, the, 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 the material yeah, yeah. of the, the, so the spiritual force and the material together unite to yeah. make that possibility, the horizon open up for that miracle to occur yeah. because the powers then become are re- become redeemed. It feels like in that space. At least that's my understanding in the third book, right? Yeah, that's that's certainly what he's he's calling for. Uh, uh, that uh, I forget what his line is in the in the epilogue, but that uh, 
you know, the work is not just for us to be free of the powers, but to free the powers from their own bondage to death as well. Their, their uh, failure to serve their, what he would say are their created uh, vocation, right? Right. And it's that divine vocation, right, Bill? It's yeah. that, that they've, they've almost forgotten that divine vocation, that deep calling. Mm. Um, and yeah. we're part of that, you know, I mean, I mean, we're the ones that have confused them by worshiping them, by turning them into idols. Uh, and they suddenly, instead of serving human life and praising God, they imagine they are God. Uh, but right. uh, not only are we sort of in bondage to their, uh, to their power, uh, but we've We've contributed in our way to their their, their fallenness, right? No, so free, being free from them is withdrawing that uh, false worship, right? Well, and it and it and it's, it's for me what I what I hear in at least in that third book of the trilogy is our our return to love in that space, right? Mm. It's our return to part of reminding the powers of the divine vocation is that return to love, right? Mm. That it is no longer an idolatrous and materializing of that distracts us from, right? Instead, we, you know, the way we engage with the fallen powers is we get distracted, uh, it's almost like a shiny new thing that mm -hmm. we're mesmerized mm -hmm. and we get, um, it's almost like we're hypnotized in that space um, and drawn away from the deeper call and the work together um, towards that. So, so the work for me, at least an understanding intercessory prayer is this, this, this return to love. How do we return to um, that? Right that that space and that's a hard thing too right? you know like because a lot of folks are like well what do you really mean fernando what do you what does wink really mean in that you know and i you know i'm i often am reminded but that's the work this is our our collective work right um uh to engage with each other in not only the spiritual practices but uh to remember the actual why we get distracted by the material, right? The, mm -hmm. That is so beholden that what what roots us in such earthly things, right? Um, right. Can be equally as distracted. Uh, um, and that's our work too, to hold each other accountable for our whole ecosystem, how we live with each other and live with this world, um, in this world together and with other uh, uh, you know, God's creation, right? Um, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's why I'm thinking a lot about, well, what does it look like to do this, What you know, outside of our existing religious and spiritual communities? Um, you know, for me, one of the challenges has been is to think about outside of the, the communities that are already praying, Right or engage in spiritual practices. Hmm. Um, I was I was talking to a number of students today here, and they were they were all they were wondering why before I start class, even before they as they start coming in, I actually am just whispering this sort of mantra of prayer that I grew up with hmm. uh, in the tradition I was raised in, uh, and and they notice my lips moving. Like, it's just sort of like, I just, it's just something that it's not a habit, but an, an intentional mindful, like, this is how I'm going to start my class today. Mm -hmm. and, and my, it is, and I told the students, I was like, well, this is part of my practice so that I don't get distracted by things like my own ego in teaching you this work that I may know, you may think I'm the expert and I may be in, you're enforced in that expertise because you all think that I'm the expert and that's kind of like almost an idolatry kind of worship. But then mm -hmm. instead, like my prayer is how do I remain curious in that space, in this space so that, that 
that I come with a beginner's mind all the time, even mm-hmm. though I may be teaching you something here that I'm also learning and that we co-create because that's my my faith in this work, right? right. Is that I'm learning with you. I'm not t- just teaching you that we are co-learning and co-teaching together. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense, but- but it they- makes to- It's great. It's total, it makes total sense. And, uh, you know, uh, teachers bringing that kind of uh, centering uh, to, to the conversation that teaching is, as, as you say, co-creating uh, in, a, in a conversation. Uh, the task of being able to, to listen and to, and to hear <laughs> uh, in the classroom, in the classroom conversation, uh, that's, a great, that's a great gift and way too rare, you know. Um, but that's my challenge in that space is that it's yeah, interesting absolutely. that, you know, how, you know, I'm, and that's how I'm, you know, and, and why I have really, and I, and, and I yearn for more of your mentorship in this bill is this, 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 this ongoing, how does this extend into the communities that are not always witnessed to or practicing with or engaged right. with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sort of these approaches because I I learn prayer from people like you. Like my practice of prayer comes from people like you, who've taught me, not taught me how to pray, but taught me in the practice of right. Mm. This you reminding me of the spiritual practice, mentoring me and guiding me. You know, mm-hmm. like I I can you know like you know is I think in my in our last conversation. I'd mentioned, like, I feel like in a way, even though I don't, I haven't, I haven't known you long, you've been a guide, you know, like it's, yeah. it's sort of like, as, as many of the guides in my life have been so critical for me, you know, and, and I'm curious, how do we, you know, I'm like, oh, I wish that, how do we do this even at scale in a larger scale so mm-hmm. that when I enter a classroom that I'm not familiar with and these students who are not familiar with me, but then witness me doing something that I consistently do, hmm. um, that I don't want that to be a rare thing, right? Yeah, but, right. You know, um, <laughs> and that's, that's I, and there, we don't have to answer that today, but it's this, this question of as, as we enter in this last chapter, the last chapters of, of Wink, as I continue to read your work um, and the work of people you've written about, um, and as I listen to people like you as guides in my life, it's like, how do we scale this? How do we, because it, it connects to what we, be, we began this conversation with is how do we create these cultures of nonviolence, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this mm-hmm. is, you know, if I've learned anything from people like you, is this the as as deep guide, is that that's this practice? Like, how do we do this practice? Uh, um, uh, well, I think we we learn it from one another. That's for sure. Uh, I once asked Stringfellow about prayer. Is is prayer life? Uh-huh. Uh, and of course, he he was very big on the on on the Psalms. And uh, yeah. the Book of Common Prayer, which he used uh, regularly. But uh, I, I said, so what's your practice? And he said, I pray more or less constantly. Mm. And uh, I think I think in a certain sense, everything he did was prayer, you know. Yeah. And that's the, that's the invitation to uh, certainly there. Uh, and, and I'll mention Walter too. Uh, uh, my wife Jeannie was uh, uh, stricken with a real aggressive brain tumor. And Walter sent a note saying that uh, he was using as a as a mantra, and you're thinking you called it to mind. But he was using as uh, as his mantra, interceding for Jeannie. Mm. Uh, just a phrase: uh, "Death shall have no dominion." Mm. Um, mm. And he said he, he was asking permission. Was that okay uh, mm. to pray for her in, uh, in 
that way. And of course, it was lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's powerful to me, right? I mean, I feel like because that 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 connects these sacred the sacredness of these intentions and practices together mm -hmm. toward life, right? Toward toward this redemptive life, right? Um, it animates us differently that we can get beyond the death event, right? Or we right. can get we can. And it and it it brings us closer to a space of deeper mourning, right? Of of a loss that we can actually liberate um, mm. in a different way. At least for me, when I witness that and hear that, right. um, in your water book, that's also this this flow of you know, like this. It almost is the living water for me in that way. Mm. Um, and and so much of that, you know, uh, I feel like in Detroit. Uh, we've been learning from and, and listening to and, uh, indigenous women, water protectors, yeah. who are doing, you know, ceremonial water walks uh, on here, here in the city, uh, uh, Anishinaabe women walking the entire Great Lakes, uh, even, uh, you know, within the last decade. Uh, carrying water and holding its sacredness. Uh, and that that's prayer, you know. Yeah. It, uh, and uh, opening space for a recognition of uh, the sacredness, uh, not only of one another, but of the earth and the waters and the, the creatures as relations and kin for whom we're interceding. Right? Uh, and it's and it's that level of intimacy with that that's space. Right. right? That's exactly I mean, I right. what I love about and I, I am gonna plug your work here right now because in a way this is I I I have a different relationship with Detroit now because of you uh -huh. uh, after reading that book. I mean, I, I may have, I have a number of people in my life who are from there and I love that city, but in a way that space became even more sacred after reading, like just, it, it is also reminding me of my intimate relationship with my ecosystem, right? that all the elements of it, this larger system that we are all in relationship with, right? And I, when I read your words, I'm like, and I'm still in this book, is this relate, this relationship, right? This ongoing relationship that does not end really, right? Mm -hmm. It's this, yeah, right. it is iterative and it's generative at the same time, right? Yeah. It's, it consistently, it, it, it iterates and evolves. But it also generates. It's creative, and it manifests, and it imagines. But it, it it requires it requires this level of connection and intimacy with that space, with mm. that context. Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And that's what I've appreciated. And that's how do we remind ourselves? This is my, you know, and this is perhaps um, why what I want to encourage and invite people into is how do we remind each other? Yeah. I, because that informs, I feel, uh, this this culture of practice around nonviolence, right? This culture of nonviolence actually is animated, for me at least, when I read your work in this way, and when you reminded me to read Will, William Stringfellow, mm -hmm. to really reinform how I've read Walter Wink, right? That yeah. I see this, like, I, I, it, it's become <clears throat> such a gift the, the, these last few weeks with my, my encounter with you has been a gift because it's Brit brought me to a deeper intimacy around a theology yeah. of the powers that, ha that plays out, really, yeah. In these contexts, right? I'm, like I, I'm so glad for that. Yeah. You know, it, but this is where I'm encouraging everyone to come into the space. How do we continue to come into the space daily, right? How do we connect to more intimately yeah. these systems, right? So that 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 the fears and anxieties of a fallen power doesn't leave us paralyzed, but actually 
like does what you've said over and over in your own writing, like liberates us into that creative force, into that imagination and that space where Mm. um, we are actually, right, able to to walk toward it, right? Walk toward Mm -hmm. rather than run away, right? We don't freeze Mm -hmm. out of fear and anxiety, but are actually walking toward, right, something that is seemingly death, but it's actually life, right? Mm. I don't know yeah. if that makes any sense yeah, at all. Yeah, sure does. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's um, and that's where I've I felt really have felt really moved by this, and where I want to continue our conversations with the FOR community as well as all the, com- the other communities that we're connected to in this. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, happening. I'm grateful for the connection and the invitation. So. I want to thank you for having this conversation oh, with thank me you today. Um, and I want to let our community know that we are hoping to have more um, of engagement with our larger community about this work, whether it's an ongoing and an ongoing conversation with uh, Walter Wink's work, um, but also in conversation and real animated and engaged conversation with your work and William Stringfellow's work, um, as well as others who, I mean, I, you know, part of this is to enliven what you've lived, Bill, like I, you know, like I wasn't there when all of the, the, what I have, what I, when I witness and when I read your, your, all your collective works is, is a really special kind of culture and community that doesn't have to be just unique into that space. It can be, it's, it's with us to this day. Right. Mm. Uh, And that's why I want to invite all of us to not wax nostalgic, but to recognize that it's with us here and now. Right. Right. That, you know what I mean? It's these are not just words on a page that are in books, but these are these are practices, strategies, tactics, skills, you know, love for me. It's love. Right. Of of how we can engage with the powers differently um, to create the space of nonviolence in our everyday life. So. So I appreciate your time and your willingness to engage with this. <laughs> I am grateful I, for it as well. And, um, and I look forward uh, to doing this more. Um, and I wanna let the, our community know that we um, invite people's insight into how they might wanna encounter and engage with this work as well. Um, so that we can continue to do this work of nonviolence. Um, one more conversation next week. Yes, absolutely. So we have another conversation coming up next week, but I'm hoping beyond that, we will continue our, um, not only our conversation, but our active work and engagement with each other in communities yep. of nonviolence. Count so, on me and then. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Bill, yeah. for this. Um, and I appreciate your wisdom, your insight, and your expertise. So, you. And your love, Bill. So thank you. <laughs>